the chemical reactions that we normally write are usually not sufficient to describe uh, the complete reaction. Uh, certainly not enough to predict our rate laws. Um, these reactions usually take a series of elementary steps. This is the reaction mechanisms. These elementary steps are hard to tease out of the overall reaction. Uh, elementary steps can be measured in like femtoseconds, really quick. Um, so we need fast lasers to be able to see the, um, and fast lasers and good techniques to be able to see the individual steps in an overall reaction. Um, so we can have, uh, in this case, we're having two elementary steps that produce the overall reaction. And these elementary steps, they have to add up to the overall reaction. We'll practice that uh, later also. Uh, we can have two, three, four, five, six. There's no number, specific number of elementary steps that might be involved in a overall reaction. Uh, we might see some things uh, when we add up the reactions, we see some things that disappear and don't end up in the overall reaction. So the most common one that you might see would be an intermediate. An intermediate is formed first and then consumed. So when we add them up, it doesn't show up in the overall reaction. A different direction that we might see is a catalyst. A catalyst is consumed first, meaning it had to be present already is consumed first and then it's produced again. So again, it does not show up in the overall reaction. And a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of a reaction. And to do that, it provides an alternative pathway that lowers the activation energy of the reaction. So uh, anytime we can lower the activation energy, we're gonna speed up the reaction. So let's look at the uh, next board. So a feature of elementary steps is the molecularity of it. So if a reactant doesn't need to collide with a specific other reaction, reactant. It's a unimolecular reaction. It might collide with some random other molecule just to get the energy to uh, react, but it doesn't have to have a specific other uh, molecule to collide with. Um, otherwise, having two molecules collide together to react would be a bimolecular reaction. Having three things simultaneously collide would be a termolecular reaction. The unimolecular and biomolecular are common. The termolecular is less common. We have to have a, a, a higher pressure system to create more of those three molecule collisions to occur. Uh, two molecule collisions are occurring all the time. But on a elementary reaction step, now we can write the rate law for an elementary reaction. We can't do it for overall reaction unless we know all the steps of those overall reactions. So for a unimolecular reaction, um, rate's going to be Ka. Um, for bimolecular, we can have it the same molecule colliding. That will give us a rate of Ka squared. Two different molecules colliding. That will give us a Ka times B. For a term molecular, we can have three unique molecules. So that'd be rate equals K times A times B times C. We can have two of one, one of another. So that'd be rate equals K A squared times B. Or we can have three of the same molecules. So that's rate equals K A Q. So these are the elementary um, rate laws that we can get from a elementary reaction. Not the overall reaction, but the elementary reaction. 
So an example of this, uh, we have a plus b equals i, i plus b gives us c plus b. And um, I'll do this on the next example also, but when we add these up, I don't have the overall reaction here. So when I add them up, whenever something shows up on both sides of the reaction, it gets canceled off. So we have a, a product and a reaction i, so they get canceled off. So we're Overall reaction is uh, A plus 2B gives us C plus D. The um, rate law is based on the slow step. The slow step is the rate determining step of the reaction. And um, if the slow step is the first step, we can just write out the rate law and we're done with it at that point. But the rate law, um, if the slow step is a second or third or fourth elementary step, then we might have some additional stuff to do to uh, figure out a rate law. So we're gonna write our rate law based on the slow step. That's the rate determining step. So in this case, it's gonna be rate equals K times I times B. But the I is the intermediate. We want to get rid of intermediates. We don't like to see intermediates in our rate laws, if at all possible. Um, so I'll demonstrate this a little bit better on the next example here also. On the fast one, we're going to treat it like an equilibrium. And I'll show it also as um, uh, uh, opposing rates also. And um, for equilibrium expressions, it's going to be products over reactants. We're going to solve for the one that we want to get rid of our, remove from our rate law. So we want to remove this I, the intermediate. So you solve for i, so that would be a, a constant, an equilibrium constant, constant times a times b. We're going to substitute it in for i here. So we're going to have rate equals k times k eq, eq a times b times b. So we end up with rate equals k times a times b squared. So let's do this one more time with a little bit more detail. Is that in? Is in? Okay. So we have three steps now. Our second step is the slow step. So uh, we want to add up the three elementary steps to get the overall reaction. So we have uh, two NOs. Um, we don't have any NOs over here to cancel off, so we're going to have two NOs. We have a H2, well, we have two H2s on the reactant side. We have no H2s on the product side. We have an N2O2 on the reactant side. We have one on the product side, so we're going to cancel that one off. We have an N2O on the reactant side. We have an N2O on the product side. So we're going to cancel that off. So we've done all the reactant side. Let's finish the product side. We have a water. We have two waters. We also have an N2. And that is the overall reaction. So in this case, we had two intermediates along this pathway. So we find our slow step. We write our rate law based on our slow step. So it's going to be rate equals K times H2 into O2. But that N2O2 is an intermediate. So we want to remove that if possible. And I uh, have the rates here. Um, with subscripts so we can keep track of them. 
And on the fast, fast reaction, there's going to be an equilibrium reaction. So second one's slow. This one's faster than this one. So it's fast enough that we're going to get a reverse reaction and equilibrium occurring. So I'll write the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction. So the forward reaction will be uh, K1 times NO squared. The reverse reaction is going to be K minus 1 times N2O2. And equilibrium is going to be when the two rates are equal to each other. The forward rate equals the reverse rate. So we set those two together. Uh, we put in the forms here, K1 times NO squared, K minus 1 times N2O2. And we can solve for K1 over K minus 1. That would be our equilibrium constant. And it will give us our product over our reactants uh, with the reactants raised up to the coefficient that they have. But we're actually looking for N2O2, the intermediate. So we solve this for N2O2. We're going to get that equal to K1 over K minus 1 times NO squared. We substitute into our reaction, pull all the constants into one spot. So we have a collection of constants. We're going to just label that as a new constant. Now we get times H2 times NO2. So we want to be able to add up our into elementary reactions to get the uh, overall reaction. And um, based on the slow reaction, right, our rate law, we will be able to identify uh, intermediates. Uh, and um, uh, any catalysts are present. And I didn't point this out earlier. And uh, now when we have our Father, we have our transition state. So at the height of our activation energy, let's call it our transition state. And also can be called an activated complex. Our books using a transition state, you might see other books use activated complex. Um, and if our slow step is the very first reaction, we should write our, our rate law and we're done with it. If it's our second or third, then we want to remove any intermediates that might be uh, left in that reaction. And once we get rid of the intermediates, then we have our rate law. <clears throat> 